going on, everybody? It's the Big Dog Podcast. This is Josh Wilson. Got Jonathan Mack in the studio back from the West Coast. Jonathan, welcome. What up? What up? What's going on? Nothing much. Just jet lagged, tired. Because you were out there, what, a week? Uh, Eight days. Eight days. Yeah, that's enough time to get you jacked up on the time. So yeah, it was weird. I was getting texts from people in Virginia, like, "Why are you texting me at six in the morning?" Just right. confused. Yeah, I mean, well, that's not a disrespectful time, at least. Now, was it six a.m. East Coast or six a.m. West Coast? Uh, six a.m. West Coast. Oh, you're so good, man. yeah, for you're, them, you're for good. them, it's a reasonable time. For me, eh. it's six a.m. You're fine. <laughs> My thing is, when I travel to the West Coast, the um, the first night I'm there is a struggle. Like, cause I don't stay up late. So like I fall out early now I'm West coast. They're all behind. We're hanging out with friends doing whatever. I'm like, y'all, I got to go. And if I try to man up, I get to about two thirty, three 3 o'clock in the afternoon on day two. And it's over with, I am out. I can't hang, can't hang I get a good night's sleep. And then I'm ready to roll. Yeah. Something that surprised me out there is I thought that the heat, here with the humidity yeah. would be worse, but I didn't realize like the dry heat out there will dehydrate you faster. So it's like 12 in the afternoon and I'm just like lightheaded. Where were you in LA? Yeah. I was in Los Angeles. It wasn't crazy hot there. Yeah. What was it? Eighties? Uh, it got up to nineties for two or three days that I was there. You know, I'm in California. I don't even sweat. It's an amazing thing. It's incredible. Um, I love, be on the West coast because I do get up early. Right. So I don't miss anything. Like I'm already, I got to jump. No one's getting ahead of me because I'm already up. But what I really, really love about it is when I'm on the West coast and it's evening time, just chilling out. East coast is done and quiet and asleep or they're done working at least for the day. So my afternoons when I'm on the West coast into the evenings are super chill and relaxed. Morning's a little chaotic because you got stuff going on, on the East Coast, but I love it. It always makes me happy. Yeah, I like being out there uh, mainly because I didn't realize how inconveniently timed our sporting events are oh, yeah. on the East Coast. Like, why do I need to sit and watch this game for the rest of my day? Talk about the sporting events. I always think that it's funny. Like Super Bowl, they're watching it, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon, normal time. Here on the East Coast, it's late in the day, you know, and you're going to be up till one in the morning and try to catch a Super Bowl or baseball playoffs right they're playing until two in the morning when we're sitting there on the other side it's just wild to always think about how that difference conveys or it's middle of the afternoon you know it's noon all of a sudden you know basketball games on you're like what what are we doing because you're catching like the four o'clock game on the east coast so yeah i enjoy i enjoy it a lot nfl starts like eight in the morning you get up yeah, it doesn't make any sense that, or at least I don't think Los Angeles deserved to have a Super Bowl winning team just because nobody out there cares. I saw maybe one Rams jersey in the entire city, and I was there for a week. Like, I don't think that anybody really cares about football out there. I mean, it's a good spot to be. They're at the games. They're paying the rent. Nothing wrong with it. But I, I just don't think people... I mean, they rep it and the Rams. I mean, what they've only been back there, what, a couple of years, four years? Yeah. They were stolen from St. Louis. Yeah, they're still, but weren't they originally in LA anyway? Were they? The Rams? I thought they were, they were the LA Rams, St. Louis back. I don't know. These jokers, they bounce around. I never would have thought football team would be as portable as easily as they are. Oh, well, that's because taxpayers pay the bulk of the stadium costs. So it's like, hey, well, we'll we'll move over here if you're not going to make us. Yeah, you want to give us this thing done. You can call us the the Portland Saints or something like that. Yeah, I got into an argument with a friend about the (laughs) fact that taxpayers were paying for sports stadiums. And since he's such a big football guy, he was like, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. And I'm like, on average, a professional sports stadium in a city generates taxpayers about as much money as like a Kroger would in the town. Yeah, but I mean, you can't, okay, insert, you know, you have a stadium in this point of the conversation, but you could insert any topic. And if it's taxpayers' money, it's probably not going to like anything worthwhile, the most productive, worthwhile things that people would choose for that money to go to. So look, so the things I want to talk about today, interesting thing that's kind of thinking about, and then a buddy of mine called me 
uh, with just wanted some perspective on an issue he was dealing with and working through uh, with some staff. And it, the, the comment I made centered around intent and results. And so, you know, for me and in, in, in this situation and stuff that I think about, you know, as your business is growing and developing and you're hiring people, they're taking on responsibilities from you in order to free you up to get more dialed in and doing only the things that you can do. Um, you know, they're, they're specifically to your skill sets. So you hire people to replace either your weaknesses or just to take things off your plate so you can focus more on big picture stuff. Well, when you do that, you make that higher, you also have to accept the fact that you now are going to know far less. You're not gonna know every detail of every decision that was made. Um, you're not gonna know all of the backstory conversations that led to this employee making a decision. And frankly, you don't need to. You've hired them, you've prepared them, you've trained them, you're trusting them to make the right decisions that are in alignment with the, the company's values and, and beliefs and, and where you're trying to go as an organization. If you can't, I feel like you got to worry about, hey, did, did I prepare them enough for that role, right? If you're always questioning that, always worrying that, did you prepare them enough for that position to understand the why behind things? And, and so the, the conversation we were having was centered around, hey, employee came to me with a great idea. We had this big problem we were working on. They came to me with this great idea, provided a solution, ran with it. It's now been implemented. And everything that they said and hoped would be the result of making this decision and implementing this new process is in fact accurate. And that's where we've ended up. However, on the back end, what I'm finding out is there's a lot of changes to employees, to things like that, that um, at the end of the day, wash out. They don't impact anyone negatively. It's just not how we've always done things. And I'm talking to my friend and, you know, he's like, I just don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm overthinking this. I don't know if I should be worked up about it, not worked up about it. What do you think? I was like, look, the intent was good. The intent was looking out for the organization. The intent was to solve a problem, an issue that is a big issue, um, you know, and then they, they outsourced it to find a solution to handle it. It's been addressed. Should they have probably asked some additional questions to get some clarification? Yeah, probably. However, the intent was pure and good. And regardless of whether we like the process of in the, <laughs> making the sausage, right? Everyone's enjoying the sausage at the end of the day. And so it's the intent was good. We didn't ask great questions to understand the process fully. Regardless of that, though, the end result of that process of the good intent decision of the process you went through is in fact the result that you expected. I was like, I wouldn't stress it. I'd leave it be. I think there's a little bit of a coaching moment on hey, these are some things that this is why this type of question would be important for our organization, the way we're structured, the way we operate. Um, wouldn't have changed what we did, but these are good things to know so that we're not blindsided by uh, anyone that has oversight over us or things like that. And so I was like, look, intent is good. The result was in alignment. Let, let it rock. Don't get worked up over it. Yeah, for... Oh, you're, you're muted. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you're saying that a new process was implemented. Yep. And the results were better. The results were in alignment with what they hoped they would be, but there were some changes that had to take place to get there that were not anticipated and or discussed. And they could have been, they may not have been anticipated, but if certain questions were asked, it could have then been discussed. Everybody within the organizations on the same page makes it a little bit smoother as they get to that result they want. And for me, it's like when you outsource things, when you bring in other vendors and stuff, you really got to decide what do I need to know? and What do I not need to know? 
you know, I'm deciding to outsource this project. I'm deciding to outsource these tasks. Um, am I concerned about how they get it done? Or am I concerned about the end result being what I need it to be? For me, for most things, particularly if it doesn't involve in our business dogs, how they're getting it done, I don't care. If it has to do with the dog specifically, I care 100% about how we're getting where we are. If it's got to do with, you know, some back end admin stuff, if it has to do with payroll that we're sending out, if it's got to do with, um, you know, insurance administrators, something along those lines, yeah, I don't care what they do. As long as stuff works on time, you know, I know when things are coming and when things are going, how they do it, what systems they use to do it, all that crap is irrelevant to me. I don't care. And so as I'm having this conversation with my buddy, I start kind of auditing in my own mind. Okay. Are you leading this way? This recommendation that you're giving, you know, to your friend in this particular situation, do you yourself actually lead this way? In what areas are you getting worked up, frustrated, stressed out, um, and not giving any consideration into the intent of the staff member while at the same time looking at what the results were. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I think intent, I get confused. I think for me personally, I definitely think there's a direct correlation between intent, intent and that end result, right? If your intent is to accomplish this task, then you just get it done and accomplish the task. Like that's it. There's no excuses. There's no nothing from time to time. Will something come up? Sure. That's life. But overwhelmingly it's, you know, single, single, single hit a double every once in a while. Like I'm getting on base consistently. I'm accomplishing my task. So my intent is there. So my results should also be there when results are consistently not there. I have a hard time believing that intent is also there because I intend to do a good job at work today. I intend to accomplish these said tasks that are well within my wheelhouse that are easy for me to accomplish. And this is just normal stuff I do day in and day out. Well, weeks go by and you're not accomplishing said tasks. I don't believe that your intent is actually, actually to accomplish the tasks. Even if you say it, people are like, well, I didn't mean to. I intended to, then you would have consistently, right? I intended to work out this morning. I didn't. So I'm going to work out this afternoon. That works for me. If every day I say I intended to work out this morning, but I'm never working out at all. Well, I didn't intend to do anything, but not do what I said. Cause if I intended to do it, you're going to prioritize it. So intent and results, finding that mix, finding that balance, I think is key as a leader. You know, are you getting upset and bothered without giving any consideration into the intent and the results as a leader? Are you getting hyper-focused on things you didn't know about during the process End result is right where you need to be or better but because you weren't aware of things that were going on during the process of getting to the end result that you were told we would be at. Are you bothered by that? Are you missing the joy in the end result because you're hung up on details that you didn't know about by people you pay to keep you from having to deal with the details. If you find yourself frustrated by those things, you got a bigger problem that you really need to look within at because you've hired people to handle stuff. If they're proving that they're handling it, let them run, let them run. Cause you've got intent with execution and the end results. You don't need to know that mess. If you're so worried about that stuff in the middle, you're not going to be able to focus on big picture stuff. Now, intent process, not the results. Yeah. You probably do need to wonder what's going on. What's keeping us from getting to the said results that we were going to have. Now you do need to dive into those weeds in the middle of what that process is to make sure you're leading your team through it and figuring it out. But if there's good intent, the results are what you expected. Don't get too crazy hung up on the crap in between. Hope that helps somebody today. Um, share the podcast, 
follow us on social that dog trainer on instagram uh youtube watch and share subscribe at that dog trainer on youtube and we'll catch you next time on the big dog podcast